Roxanne this time. Right, right. We'll see what we have in store for us. Of course, these players so established Azul GG with the top eight in the Oceania International Championships finalist in LAIC and he's just continuing to push even further now with a chance to win the North American International Championships did not take any breaks was the Players Cup 3 champion and just building on all of his historic play with the five regional championships. Of course, Isaiah has been on an absolute tear in the 2022 season, already a top eight at a different international championships in Frankfurt earlier this year. And of course, a regional finalist placement, losing to Ian Robb in Indianapolis in the 2019 season did win the North American International Championships as a senior and then as a master got a top four finish at Atlantic City. The decks that these players are playing, of course, Arceus V-Star with that flying Pikachu V-Max from Azul Garcia Griego, Origin Form Palkia, the big deck of the format. No surprise to see someone piloting it all the way to a finals appearance, Isaiah being the player to do so. Well, both these players know what's at stake. Huge matchup right now. Of course, Blind Pikachu, the big surprise, coming out as a, a counter to the Palkia deck, having that lightning weakness to rely on. But the consistency of both of these decks in the opening is something that both deck builders prided themselves on. We see the battle VIP passes on the side of Isaiah. Are they gonna end up here in the prize cards? We see one not available. Yeah, let's take a look at the rest of this. Each player with a Double couple evolution path. incense. The paths could be annoying. They can be nice early on to slow down the star portal. Isaiah actually only plays one stadium, that training court, and I believe that was in the prize cards there as well. So might be a while before we see a stadium hit the field in game one. Who needs them? <laughs> Neither of these players, apparently. I know they're raring to get going. I know our audience is ready to see this match. I know you at home are excited for it as well. The hand has been extended. The cards are being flipped over. Let's get down to the table. It is time, Masters TCG Finals. We're ready to crown a champion. Already starting off strong, Isaiah Bradner with the intro going to show us the capacious bucket. And we did see that battle VIP pass in the hand. So going to be off to an explosive start like he predicted in the interview yesterday. We've seen Isaiah do this in his stream games during his first deck search. Just pull all the Pokemon to the front, take a quick check. They're a very easy thing to remember exactly how many of each card you play. So you can be aware of which Pokemon may be in your prize cards. If you need to play that Hisuian Heavy Ball to go fetch a basic out. Isaiah will get some good news here, though, and learn that, hey, there's no Pokemon in the prizes this time. Yeah, we saw Rune do this earlier in his way to victory in the seniors division. Just a great way to make sure you understand every resource available to you. And you're going to have to use all 60 cards sometimes to clear a game and get through a player as strong as Azul. Checking your prize cards, a very important skill in the Pokemon TCG. Every single game, you have to set six random cards off to the side. You won't have access to them until you start to take KOs. So if you've prized an important piece, it is really useful to have that information because it can affect a lot of your decision making throughout a game. Just got another peek at the hand. We could see the quick ball in that hand as well, so multiple Pokemon going to be available for this bench. A little awkward to have Echoing Horn in the opening hand, a really powerful card in the mid to late game to sneak in a surprise KO. And we see that powerful battle VIP pass, allowing Isaiah to search the deck for two basic Pokemon, put them directly onto the bench. And that Radiant Greninja is a pretty quick and easy grab here on turn one. Yeah, just love to see that in uh, a tandem with that capacious bucket, being able to grab those water energies and then throw them away with concealed cards. You get some additional resources into the hand. And of course, having these Pokemon here by way of the battle VIP pass and the quick ball, great way to set up. Love seeing that origin form Palkia V. You're gonna need that to become a V star early and often if you wanna compete against a flying Pikachu V on the other side. Looks like the other grab will be the origin form Palkia V. I think Isaiah would love to get some more Sobbles down so he can chain together multiple shady dealings on the next turn. Drizzile's ability is really 
what activates this deck? What allows you to get access to all of your various combo pieces? What lets you get the specific supporter you need for turn? Maybe what helps you piece together the cross switcher plays, which I'm sure we will see plenty of through this match. Yeah, that's a, a great way to target down these Flying Pikachu V. Often we will see Azul trying to accelerate energies onto this Pokemon by way of Arceus V or Arceus V Star. And then you have to deal with the Flying Pikachu V Max. Concealed cards, ditches a water, drawing two more, picks up another water energy. And just a scoop up net. Could reuse the Greninja here, just scoop up net and concealed cards once again, but that's a pretty weak use of that powerful item card. You really love to save these nets for your Drizziles to reuse Shady Dealings, but Isaiah has to do it here. I think he wants to just extend a little bit further. Yeah, I think one more Pokemon really would make him feel comfortable. The Quick Ball right now has to make a decision if it wants to go for the another Origin Form Palkia V or the Sobble so that you have maybe potential additional Drizziles. We do know the Evolution Instance is in hand for next turn, so won't be completely dead, but certainly has some more playability here if he found more basic Pokemon. This is already looking like an excellent start, though. Does Quick Ball away another Water Energy? This will likely fetch a Sobble, and this has already put, I believe, three energies in the discard pile on turn one, which is excellent for Isaiah's deck. Yeah, being able to get these energy cards back by way of the Origin Form Palkia V-Star using that Star Portal ability. You can start to load up some Pokemon. You can get energy cards onto your Origin Form Palkia V-Star, or you could go for some sneaky plays like we've seen some players go with in that Radiant Greninja, having Moonlight Shuriken as an option. Moonlight Shuriken can be a nice way to try and set up a Flying Pikachu. We saw Rune do that in the Seniors Division for now, Isaiah will just attach to Origin Form Palkia, and now over to Azul. It is his opening. I do see a research there in the hand, so at minimum that's an option, but the rest of the cards, I think there's a bunch of energies. Well, he said that his deck was consistent on the opening turns. I think that's going to have to be post-supporter. Something great about this Flying Pikachu V, it does have free retreat, which combos extremely well with Arceus decks, oh. as there is a pretty powerful attack they can use on turn one. If Azul finds a pretty solid seven cards, we could still see a turn one Trinity charge. Let's see it. Four energies lost, a Rhyon oh. and a Beeberl. And is it going to have to be Crobat time here? Well, thankfully, a quick ball, but yeah, the Crobat might be the only way to find a relevant energy. Of course, flying Pikachu V with that free retreat cost going to be beneficial if the double turbo were to be found for that Arceus V. This is Azul's first deck search. So similarly to what Isaiah did, we will see Azul take a moment here, try to get aware of what he has available, what is prized. Of course, we see a boss's orders being in the prizes, a double turbo energy. Those are important things to be aware of. Yeah, just two double turbos now in order to make this happen. So might understand that it's going to be a pretty difficult ask of your deck to help you out in that situation. Maybe you don't go for a Crobat in that spot, and you just uh, play that Dark Energy down. So I think Azul here is debating, do I dig for the Trinity Charge, or do I just accept that I'll have to play it a little slow, put the path in play, try to slow down the Star Portal, and also get an Energy Drop still on to my Arceus. You're going to see that Arceus come down. And yeah, this seems to be a, uh, a much safer play if right. the Dark Energy does come down. It's, you're asking so much of the top of your deck if you do go for this Crobat. There is a path in the hand. I would expect Azul to want to play it this turn, trying to close Isaiah off of Star Portal, but chooses not to. I guess it makes sense as well because it would cut him off of using his own Star Birth next turn if Isaiah didn't bump the stadium. Yeah, that is uh, a double-edged sword for sure. Being able to lock out abilities can be fantastic, but you also would love to use your Star Birth ability. Going to need some additional help here in the coming turn, as this was one of the weaker starts we've seen out of Azul in this tournament. Isaiah is actually sitting on a couple of cross switchers here, but the fact that Azul did not retreat this flying Pikachu is actually going to make it a little more difficult for Isaiah to uh, try to target this down. It is possible for him to KO Flying Pikachu. He would need either Galarian Zigzagoon or Choice Belt to do it. But it would be super strong for Isaiah if he can find a way to just take this two-prize KO. And he's already bringing Choice Belt to the front of the deck. 
Yeah, thinking aggressive, and that is, of course, going to be very beneficial in situations like this. You know that lightning weakness is certainly a big issue that you have, so if you can remove this flying Pikachu V from play, just play against the typical Arceus build, maybe that's something that lines up in your favor. He also has Quick Ball in hand. That could get Zigzagoon, and then you can save the belt for later, potentially. But Choice Belt is still a solid option. Choice Belt a little more versatile as well if you want to take the knockout here on the Flying Pikachu V and then have some additional attacks available in, or a damage available for that Arceus V later on. Right, yeah, and saving the Zigzagoon actually would be really beneficial for the Arceus. You could even still put it in play this turn and just drop that one damage counter down on Arceus. I like all those lines. We'll see which one Isaiah is thinking of now. The quick ball coming down. That's going to throw away Roxanne. I don't need that if I'm just going to keep winning like <laughs> this. And prize cards are certainly going to be falling very soon for Isaiah. Roxanne, the comeback card. Not as necessary when you are the aggressor in the game. And since Isaiah was going first, he's definitely going to be trying to push that Ooh, advantage. There's and Cross switcher. switcher here brings up the origin form Palkia. He, oh, oh, and he can go for yeah. the Hydro Break with this Choice Belt and take out Arceus V before Azul has a chance to get off a Trinity Nova. Yeah, you know what's even better than knocking out a Flying Pikachu V? There you go. <laughs> Leaving it active with no way to accelerate energies. Wow, what a play from Isaiah. Great decision making, great sequencing. Azul top decking that Flying Pikachu V Max and left with... A little bit of an awkward hand has the Marnie, has the Crobat. If you play Marnie here, you don't have to put the bat in play, but you're only getting five cards. And what five cards really help Azul here? Yeah, uh, you'd want to have the Arceus for later on. You also would love to maybe disrupt this hand from Isaiah. And as soon as you play down the Crobat, it limits your potential to play down multiple Arceus or even one Arceus. If that gets knocked out and the Crobat is available, that's going to be an easy two prize cards for Isaiah to finish this game. Azul does play one copy of Raihan, so there actually was a world where he could Raihan up one of those basic lightning energies that got discarded turn one and pull off a Max Balloon with a double turbo energy, but he just did not get that set up. Yeah, he threw it away turn one. He didn't. Oh, that Raihan <laughs> hit the discard pile too? Yep, I see it in there. Yep, didn't really have an option. We saw the four energies in the discard pile too, so it's really brutal here for Azul trying to salvage this week's start. Looking through the deck from an Ultra Ball, can grab any Pokemon with this. Surely Isaiah won't KO my second Arceus V, Azul says to himself. The audacity of this young man. Now shuffles up, presents the deck to Isaiah. What is his supporter for turn? I see a boss's orders in that hand. There's a path, and there is a Marnie as well. Yeah, a staple of this deck for Azul. So beneficial in many matchups. Just reducing the hand size of the opponent down, getting some of those good cards from the, the hand to the bottom and of the deck. And he does find double turbo energy, so we could see Trinity charge this turn, even though he wouldn't be dealing any damage to this active origin form Palkia. He gets to load up this flying Pikachu potentially. You start to wonder how many energies are left at this point, but <laughs> oh, surely enough to assist the flying Pikachu VMAX, and that is going to be the line here. Azul sorting through the deck now, trying to see, yeah, we do see three basic energies available, and that is going to mean flying Pikachu VMAX is online next turn. Azul is definitely on the back foot in this game. Isaiah taking a quick two prizes, and on turn two, Azul doesn't even deal any damage, just uses a set-up attack. Even though it is a very powerful attack, it's advancing his board state, but not getting any more damage in play does not get him any closer to taking prize cards. Yeah, Azul just going to check the deck a little more, make sure that... Maybe there is a line available, and yet yeah, it's going to be very safe here. Make sure exactly what he needs in the deck is there. He does have that other double turbo energy in hand, so he may be thinking of just spreading the energies out so that he can respond to potentially whatever Isaiah does, because the double turbo energy does, even though it reduces 20 damage done by Max Balloon, it's still enough to hit a one-hit knockout on Origin Form Palkia V-Star. Good to note there for Azul, going to leave a lightning energy in the deck, maybe helping out in other situations, potential retreats perhaps. Sure. 
And now Isaiah will shuffle Azul's deck. It will be over to his turn. He's already got Hydro Break online. You cannot use that attack in back-to-back -back turns, so he will need to switch this Palkia out of the active or evolve it into a Palkia V-Star. We see a Melanie in the hand. I don't believe we have the waters available, but potential retreats right. could happen. Oh, there Ooh. is a one. You know what? <laughs> just, just give it all to him. <laughs> And that Melanie can grab the energy out of the discard pile, accelerating it into play. An excellent supporter for this deck. Getting an attachment, drawing wow. a few cards as well. And he gets the Capacious Bucket, finds the V-Star to evolve the active, which is what he does right away. Yeah, being able to preserve these energies are going to be so nice for Isaiah. Maybe we'll be able to set up a third attacker if this game even needs it. This is going to be so clean. Eyeing up Palpad potentially did bring that Irida to the front of the discard pile. Capacious Bucket will kick things off, though, grabbing two waters from the discard. We have not seen concealed cards yet. Isaiah, though, would need to bump this path to the peak if he wanted to use that. Their training court right there at the bottom. I'm sure Isaiah would love to find it. It is something that uh, he did just take off of his prizes, and so once it got Marnied into the deck, it, it was chilling there on the bottom. We're going to see the Irida coming back from the Pal Pad. Maybe a card like Melanie. If one of these Palkia V Star were to fall, you could have those water energies right back and available for play. If you find an Irida, of course, you could maybe grab another Palkia V and start attaching those water energies you just found off the Capacious Bucket. Supporter recovery is extremely powerful in the Pokemon TCG when used at the right time. And subspace swell taking the KO. Isaiah down to just two prizes remaining. And that Crobat V on the bench is a tasty target to try and close this game out. Gabriel definitely looking for some disruption here. And I think we Roxanne. see the Roxanne. Exactly what I, Azul needed to find. And path to the peak is in play already. So Radiant Greninja will not... Help Isaiah off of just these two cards. Wow, exactly what the doctor ordered. Azul is going to find that Roxanne and going to have the hand disruption and the big knockout here on the V-Star Pokemon. You can see how powerful the addition of this card is to the format. Coming out in the most recent expansion, Astral Radiance. Previous to this, our best disruption option was Marnie. It left your opponent with four cards. While it is a little bit more usable in the early game, it's really not the strongest disruption. You're still giving your opponent plenty of cards to work with so that they can come back into it. But Roxanne leaving them crippled with only two. Azul could find a path to make the 6-2 to two comeback here in game one. This is something we have seen out of Azul already. Had three win and ins to get into the top eight, and it did take a game three six prize comeback to get into the top eight. Sure enough, finds himself down again, a place that his deck often finds itself and we see the Crobat. That's going to be a great way to avoid a boss's orders knockout. A huge find there from Azul. Isaiah's easy path to victory on this turn no longer available. Yeah, don't need to worry about those attacks. Just look at the 300 <laughs> hit points. Cannot easily be KO'd now. And Max Balloon, speaking of easy KOs, just takes out Palkia. Azul is starting to mount his comeback. Isaiah, only two cards in hand, and is really having to think about what to send up here. It will be the Palkia. Let's see what the draw is. Water did he find the training court? He court. did find his training court. That is a huge hit. Now, concealed cards is online. It can draw him more cards here. That is a one of in Isaiah's deck. It's a quick ball and a Marnie. Marnie can see him more cards here. Quick ball can start to establish a third and final Palkia V star. So I think Isaiah's path at this point is pretty clear. Hit this Pikachu really hard. You accept that your Palkia will be going down and then establish a third Palkia V star to clean it up on the next turn. Yeah, the quick ball going to toss the Manaphy 
find an additional Pokemon here. That origin form, Palkia V, obviously a great selection. Can find an energy card for it and then go into the Marnie, hopefully holding on to a few of those cards to potentially close out on this Flying Pikachu VMAX in the next turn. Looking at the options for Isaiah, debating between a Zigzagoon and the Palkia. Would love to just get a bunch of Pokemon in play here, I think. One of them really does need to be the Palkia, I feel like. Yeah, we've seen this Galarian Zigzagoon do a lot of work in combination with the Scoop Up Net. And I think Isaiah's got a plan for okay. it here. Okay, I'm excited to see where this is going. Galarian Zigzagoon coming to the hand. That headbutt tantrum ability allowing you to place one damage counter anywhere on your opponent's field when Zigzagoon comes down. Oh, going to rely on the Aqua Bullet okay. most likely. The Inteleon, of course, would be a great find off of a card like Marnie here. And we need to make sure Azul remembers to put a damage counter on the Pikachu. Get that there so that Zigzagoon can pull his weight. Okay. Isaiah hoping for Aqua Bullet to get him back into this. And this is actually smart as well because by going with the Aqua Bullet strategy, you give yourself a couple of turns because if you put the Origin Form Palkia V in play and you miss, your opponent is going to just be able to take out that two prizer to win the game. Yeah, we see Isaiah immediately elated to see that level ball going to be searching out all sorts of cards here the drizzile now going for the evolution incense into the inteleon we see a cross switcher and an echoing horn and the horn can pull a oh Pokemon there's double back cross out. switcher oh, we're gonna take this arceus he's got the knockout on arceus echoing horn takes the ko isaiah bradner going up game one here in the masters finals <laughs> sometimes the cards just fall perfectly into place. And that Marnie was exactly what he needed to see. Found all of the combos. And so often you think about bosses' orders in situations like that. The supporter was already played. There's no way that you're gonna take right. away any of my Pokemon. They're not even in play. What a combo of cards to pull off for Isaiah. We didn't even see it coming. He busts it out. All of a sudden brings up that Arceus V and winning the game in such quick fashion as well. Azul Garcia Griego, even though he's got the counter, does not find the pieces to win in this first game. Of course, we will be going to a game two now. He'll have an opportunity to go first, which I imagine he will choose to do so. And hopefully he can get a little bit more established. Man, Isaiah just was firing on all cylinders in that game, didn't miss a beat. Yeah, that's what he talks about with his deck. It just doesn't miss. When you find those opening battle VIP pass or passes, you're certainly going to get off to an explosive start. This deck honestly just needs one piece to get going. You find that Irida after you already have your Pokemon in play, and you can just see the fireworks, Drizziles into Inteleons, into all of these amazing item cards that just start to gravitate everything into your favor. Got to be remembering that last turn there as well. Isaiah off the Roxanne, drawing into the training court, the perfect piece to help bail him out of just such a low hand size. That is really what led him to drawing a couple cards, finding a supporter card, shuffling Azul's hand back into the deck, and then finding Intellian in order to pull off the cross switcher echoing horn play. Incredible play from Isaiah Bradner. Of course, Azul been in this situation before. It's going to try to shake it off as best as possible. Believes in this deck, understands that it can certainly pop off for him. If he finds Arceus and Energy, you know that he's going to be feeling a lot more comfortable than that initial start he had in game one. He'll already start off at an advantage as Isaiah is taking a mulligan. Nothing too big in the prizes for Azul. One Arceus V-Star makes it a little harder to get one in play potentially, but he still has Evolution Incenses, a few Ultra Balls, plenty of ways to get the V-Star in play on turn two. And on the other side, we're going to be looking at Isaiah's opener because this is when his deck generally does have more consistent battle VIP passes. Right. Going second, having access to that Irida. When you already play for battle VIP pass, you have to think that it's got to be available. 
Absolutely, Irida almost turning into a Bridget when you're going second, just getting you all your Pokemon in play. And right away, I think I do see a VIP pass in yes, this game for Isaiah. Not even an Irida to fetch it out, but why not? Why play Irida for it when you can just raw draw into it? Well, we do love it. seeing that. If you're rooting for Isaiah Bradner here, of course, we are going to continue on. We have those prize cards placed, and we are jumping straight into game two here in the North American International Masters Finals. And Azul does have the quick ball to get the flying Pikachu, but I don't see an energy card in this hand. That is really the one thing you want as an Arceus player is an energy to attach for turn. We talked about it all weekend. That's really one of the key issues versus Arceus against the Palkia is that you can miss that initial energy drop with the Palkia deck. You can star portal, get access to those energies and attack on the second turn. Arceus needs so much more in its favor to do that. And this isn't a deck where you're going to see Melanie come down. There's a lot of right. different energy cards that Azul is playing. None are water. Azul does, I think, have a way to dig for it, though. Is it worth putting Crobat V in play? Getting the turn one energy is so important, but Crobat can be such a liability. Yeah, if Azul doesn't suffer the early loss of a Pokemon V, maybe this can be a great play for him. He could also do what he did in game one, sure. where if you play the Crobat early enough, you find that Crobat V max, and nobody wants to target down 300 hit points. Azul did prize a couple of energy as well. Let's not forget one darkness energy and the capture energy. And capture energy is really just an excellent card to find in the early turns, but not something for Azul in this one. I've heard it's your favorite. <laughs> I do quite enjoy capture energy. Makes a lot of sense in uh, decks like this where you just want to get a bunch of basic Pokemon in play, especially when you're wanting to establish flying Pikachus and Bieber Elves. Well, just about every way to search out Pokemon here in the hand for Azul. He but has a tough choice here, though, because there is an Arceus V-Star in this hand. Does he discard it and only have access to one through the rest of the game since one is in the prizes? Or does he hold on to this piece? Yeah, it's going to be a tough call. Of course, when you see that flying Pikachu V, you feel a little bit better about your situation. That's going to be a great Pokemon to get down on the first turn because you're going to have an unchecked position where you could evolve into flying Pikachu V Max and not have to worry about a knockout from Isaiah. So Azul's remaining cards, I believe, are the Crobat, the Arceus V-Star, Evolution Incense, and Ultra Ball. So he can play this all the way out and get a clean Crobat for six. And it could be okay because you usually only want one V-Star in this matchup. And this is actually a really good decision here from Azul. Can hold on to the V-Star and still Ultra Ball to get the Flying Pikachu. Yeah, if he was down one and had one in the prize cards and lost just about every way to search out this Arceus V-Star would have been in a really tricky spot. So going to just leave it down to five cards here from the Crobat and would love to see an energy right now. That's the big thing he's needing. Double turbo or basic energy. Any of them will work. And how about that first card being a basic dark? Love to see it. If you were rooting for Azul, see the Bidoof as well. And I think the Flying Pikachu VMAX is in hand as too. So that is going to be very nice. Taking a look at the discard pile. He has already gone through quite a bit on turn one. Not something this deck normally does unless you really do have to rely on the Crobat. There's already quite a sizable discard pile. He will bench Bidoof and now passes it over to Isaiah. And we know Isaiah is sitting on a solid hand battle VIP pass and I think a few level balls there as well. Now we see the, the start with the Galarian Zigzagoon and holding the Palkia. He actually does not have a supporter to play this turn. The only supporter I think I see there in the hand is the Roxanne. There is no basic water energy either, so he can't get an attachment to a Palkia or use concealed cards quite yet. Yeah, this is one tricky spot here. When you have the Battle VIP Pass, generally you find that Radiant Greninja, you use a card like Capacious Bucket, or even just one water in the hand and you can start going through your deck very quickly. Maybe find a card like an Irida and then just really push your agenda. But instead now going to have to be reliant on the top of the deck unless something else is in that hand. I believe we do see a Drizzile for the following turn, but it just feels a little slow. 
It is a little slow, but you can make up for it, of course. Let's not forget with Star Portal. Even if you miss the energy attachment, you can still concealed cards in future turns. You can Ultra Ball and Quick Ball away those basic energies in order to get them in the discard pile so that Star Portal just fetches them all back. We are going to see that Sobble. Of course, the only way to grab that Drizzile on the following turn. You got to have that Pokemon in play. And Isaiah does actually only play three copies of Sobble, not something you normally see from this Intellian engine. You really want to get them established quickly, but with the release of Radiant Greninja, it feels like it's not as necessary to have that three Sobble bench. You really only need two in play. So Isaiah's decided for this weekend, I'm just going to go with three Sobbles. I think that's the same thing he played actually in Milwaukee last weekend to a top 32 finish and decided it was good enough for NAIC as well, and hey, it's gotten him to the finals. Yeah, when you're playing Battle VIP passes and you have that Hisuian Heavy Ball, don't have to think about, oh, well, what if I prize one? Sure. I'll, I only have two, but no, you're going to be able to find all of these Pokemon when you need it. Draw for turn on Azul's side. We know he's already sitting on several evolutions. There is an Arceus. He's also got the boss's orders in hand. Something to certainly consider. I think a research as that last card. Yep, there is the professor's research, boss's orders, and lightning. And of course, having that Arceus of V-Star, that star birth ability is going to be what really sets Azul over the top this turn. Just depends on what cards he really wants to focus on here. Well, we know one thing he needs is definitely double turbo energy. He wants to start using Trinity Nova as quickly as possible, take a prize, and also accelerate to this flying Pikachu. But he's got a little bit of an option as far as what to take with this second card from Starbirth. Is there anything specific you want to see? Actually, Azul going to go for research first, though, and see what he gets before deciding on what to Starbirth for. Yeah, you have to think if maybe Azul were to find a path to the peak, that could be a great card to sneak into play. If you already use your Star Birth ability, yep. then of course you lock that out for your opponent. Maybe you don't see that Star Portal or that Radiant Greninja have an impact. So Azul does find the double turbo off of the research. Star Birth being used, flipping the V-Star marker. Now we'll grab the path just like you mentioned, and Ultra Ball is another grab here. This combos extremely well with Bieberel. Yeah, just being able to reduce the hand size and get through the hand so industrious incisors can bring you back up. And of course, we've already seen that the Crobat V is a weakness right now in play. Could potentially start thinking about just getting that evolution in line right now. Having the 300 hit points, don't have to worry about any shenanigans with cross switchers coming up. A huge thing for Azul to hit. There's really not going to be a realistic way for Isaiah to take a two-prize knockout now. He could knock out the Arceus, but it would involve scoop-up net and choice belt. So that's a lot to hit, a lot to dig for. We see the MVP of yesterday, Phoebe, in the discard pile. Did a lot of work against the wild deck of Sander, but not going to have an impact here today. Yeah, Azul would not be here if it was not for the Phoebe, allowing him to KO Sanders, Mill Tanks, Azul recognizing it was a necessary card for the tournament this weekend. The other MVP, Bieberl, tried to do work with Tail Smash, but just did not make the biggest impact. But it can grab some additional cards with those Industrious Incisors, and we're going to see Arceus V-Star just take the simple knockout here on the Galarian Zigzagoon and charge up that flying Pikachu V-Max. Three energies on Pikachu. It's now ready to start swinging with Max Balloon. Now Azul in a great spot to respond to most of what Isaiah wants to do, and he has also now taken the first prize card in this game. Yeah, also important to note that he completed all of this with only three Pokemon on his bench. It's, uh, it's nice when you can limit your bench size against this Palkia V-Star deck, as you know they're trying to hit huge numbers with the, the, the Palkia V-Star hitting upwards of potentially 260 damage with a full bench. Capacious Bucket grabbing two waters out of the deck. Wanting to get an attachment here. Also, maybe just wanting to get more in the discard pile. Doesn't have any in there quite yet. Needing to use Star Portal this turn if he wants to pull off an attack or potentially a Melanie. 
You did mention that there was just that one stadium and the path to the peak is in play. So true. certainly have to think that that training court would be a recipe for success here. Yeah, that Drizzile in hand can fetch it out right away. The easy grab whenever you are wanting to use those rule box Pokemon abilities. Yeah, Isaiah's just asking a lot of his deck right now to put him in a decent position. The Arceus V-Star is a threat in and of itself. Flying Pikachu V-Max, obviously a huge d threat that could potentially just sweep Palkia V-Stars left and right. This is a little bit of a tough puzzle. We can see Isaiah's having a tough time with what to do this turn. There's so much search of the deck available to him. You can make so many plays. You have so much access to the cards in your list. It can really be hard to iron out exactly what the play is. Yeah, in Milwaukee, they decided, I'm just going to let my deck decide for me and play Professor's Researches. <laughs> uh, maybe it'll just find everything for me. But instead, we're going to go with the Irida route in the, uh, today's game, and we do see the Scoop Up Net and Radiant Greninja going to try to assist in this position. Level Ball can get any Pokemon out with 90 hit points or less, uses another Shady Dealings, and does replace the Path to the Peak, that one training court coming in clutch. Yeah, it's nice to counter the Path to the Peak in this situation. You're going to be able to potentially get some Water Energies into the discard pile. The only real issue is that with this limited amount of Water Energies, that you'll have access to, Star Portal may not be used to its fullest potential. Sure, and that is always really tough whenever you're knowing that later in the game you're going to have to be going for Melanie if you want to keep up tempo. We do see a cross switcher in the hand, one of Isaiah's favorite cards. And Scoop Up Net will reset that Radiant Greninja. Now concealed cards can be used once again. No Galarian Zigzagoon going to use that Scoop Up Net for additional resources here instead of damage. Really having a tough time here. You can see Isaiah's really got the wheels turning, trying to figure out what to do. Has Quick Ball with a water energy in the hand. Of course, can use Training Court to bring back any of these water energies that he discards. What basic Pokemon do you think he wants to start establishing next? Yeah, having an additional attacker right now would be fantastic. That. Origin form Palkia V certainly comes to mind, just being able to set up an additional V star after this flying Pikachu V Max is likely going to start wreaking havoc on uh, the current Palkia V in play. So what do we think the optimal attacker here for Isaiah will be? Does he want to go in with a Palkia into the fully set up Pikachu or is there some other play available to him? Yeah, it, it's, it's hard to call. You'd think that he'd like to use some of these basic Pokemon here to, to help the, perhaps the Radiant Greninja could use a Moonlight Shuriken and start to soften up the Flying Pikachu VMAX. But at the same time, you have to consider the prize cards. Maybe Roxanne is a, a card that he could use to fight against Azul, but we see the Beeroll in play. One thing that Azul putting that Crobat VMAX in play does is, while it takes away the low HP liability of Crobat V, it does put another three prize Pokemon out there. I wonder if there's ever a path where Isaiah Moonlight Shurikens damages those two VMAX Pokemon, 90 damage apiece, and then he's just two KOs away from winning the game and winning the North American International Championships. Yeah, Azul does play two Sharon's Care, but they do not help those big Pokemon VMAX, the Dark type in Crobat and the Lightning in the Flying Pikachu. So certainly could see a route to victory uh, established there. Isaiah's really thinking about it. It is going to be a big combo of cards. It's going to be necessary for him to cross switcher in future turns. It's going to be necessary for him to potentially boss his orders, which he only has one copy of in this list. There is also a cross switcher prized. Isaiah is definitely aware of that. I'm sure that is a card he is always counting to make sure. We do see the flip of the V Star marker. Origin form Palkia V-Star going to get these energies accelerated, and it's just two. Uh, so he cannot go for the Moonlight Shuriken play this turn unless he has a way to get another water energy potentially. Oh, and it's just a pass? Is that what that was? It is a pass over to Azul, and Azul has bosses' orders in hand. 
Would it be a good play here for Azul to just bring up that Radiant Greninja and knock it out with the Arceus and take away Isaiah's V-Star power for the game? You have to think so. Just being able to remove these water energies, especially right now, the Melanie is going to be the only real way that Isaiah can continue to accelerate these cards and keep up in the exchange. And when he's doing that, then you can't focus on boss's orders. What a missed opportunity for Isaiah had, I believe, the scoop up net already, or if he had already used it potentially, but Azul will recognize Radiant Greninja is a threat. If I don't bring this up now and take care of it, that path is lined up for Isaiah to just hit my two VMAXs and then be just two turns away from taking all six prizes. Yeah, some people in the audience or at home may be questioning why do you go ahead and use your V-Star ability in that situation. Yeah. But we know that there was only one training court in the deck. When you play that down to counter the Path to the Peak, if Azul has another Path to the Peak lined up, you are done. You do not have access to any more of those abilities for the rest of the game. And Azul does play the full four copies of Path, and that is definitely something Isaiah was familiar with. I actually saw online last night a picture of Isaiah testing this matchup. He didn't leave this venue after top four and go to bed and get rest. He went and grinded out games against this matchup. He wanted to be as prepared as possible for this match. Yeah, Sam Chen definitely pulls off an interesting cosplay. <laughs> So Azul will grab another Flying Pikachu, wants to start establishing a second VMAX. If Isaiah can't capitalize on the low HP Pokemon coming down this turn, Azul will get just two VMAXs in play, and that's where things really start to get scary for Isaiah. It can be manageable to get through one Flying Pikachu VMAX, but once that second one comes out, things get really tough. 310 hit points is a lot. One hit knockouts is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Having no energies available, that's insurmountable. <laughs> Azul does not have the path to the peak here, so that is a big sigh of relief for Isaiah. He'll have access to training court to get an energy attachment at minimum, but his Radiant Greninja has now hit the discard pile. Yeah, that is one of those rule box Pokemon that he would like to make use of, along of, with, of course, the Palkia V-Star, but we see that marker already flipped. It's been used for the game, and Isaiah is going to have to figure this out with uh, some acceleration from the Melanie or just having to slow down and promote some of these one prize Pokemon to buy time. Yeah, and he top decks Irida for the turn. I don't think he can actually pull off a Melanie now. The only way he can get out Intellion in order to use Shady Dealings would be through Irida. And of course, you can only play one supporter card per turn. We've seen some decks start to include Raihan for situations like this. Maybe you can bring out that one prize Pokemon and start to get aggressive in that spot, but this is not going to be one of those decks just really focused on uh, burning through, getting the acceleration from the Melanie, and if you're not getting knocked out, then cards like that aren't going to be beneficial anyways. So Intellion and Capacious Bucket being eyed up initially from the Irida. We know how powerful this card has been for these Origin Form Palkia decks because getting access to your Intellion line just lets you piece together so many plays and set up future turns. Even in this position, as you see the hand swirling from Isaiah, you start to think, oh, there's, there's something brewing in that big brain. Just what can overcome this board state? He definitely knows he is behind here. He knows that he is going to have to fight back in this one. And the addition of Roxanne to the format really just allows players to stick around a little bit longer in these games. If this was the previous format, Isaiah may have already conceded this, recognized he's a little too far behind. There's just no way he's going to win. But through Roxanne, you can just really limit your opponent quite a bit more and force them to dig for those pieces Azul, though, is playing kind of the perfect counter to Roxanne in his deck. Yeah, Azul thought about benching a second Bidoof. And right. That just really is a nod to the strength of Roxanne. Maybe double industrious incisors would be the way to avoid uh, absolutely running out of those resources, getting stuck on a, a dead hand, and not having access to cards like Boss's Orders to start removing these Pokemon V on the other side from Isaiah. Isaiah's really having a tough time with this Irida. He's been deciding here for 
a little while just going back and forth between what he wants to take. It looks like Hisui and Heavy Ball will be a choice. There is that third Sobble in the prizes. Scoop up net, always a great find after playing down the Intellion. Maybe get to bring that back up and make more use of shady dealings later on. That could be a good play for sure. An easy choice for the first card of this ability, but of course, Intellian Shady Dealings allows you to get two trainer cards. And Isaiah thinks Quick Ball is a good second choice. Yeah, not sure what else is really left in this spot. Perhaps uh, a Sobble could help find some additional resources, but we got to start seeing energies hit the board because this. This is not a winning line right now with no energies in play. Yeah, Azul has to be feeling very good. He knows that there is no way for Isaiah to attack this turn. There's already been a supporter played, so Melanie is not an option. And that V-Star power has also already been used. Isaiah did use the Hisuian Heavy Ball, lets him look at those prize cards and pick up a basic Pokemon out of there, which he did fetch the third copy of Sobble out. And then he shuffles that Hisuian Heavy Ball back in. One of my favorite cards from this newest set. Just prize search like this is really nice and adds a lot of consistency and really lets you be unique in your deck building with uh, how you decide to include Pokemon. Yeah, so often players will uh, discuss prize cards and how unfortunate it was, it was that I prized this many Pokemon. But when you're able to search out that basic Pokemon from your prize cards with something that's so easily accessible with all of the Drizzile and the Irida, Irida that we see in these decks, it, it just makes it even cleaner to play maybe three Sobble in your list. And it will just be a pass to Azul. Does he have a boss's orders to get this Sobble out of the active spot. I don't see it yet in the hand. We know he did play one on the last turn, and I actually don't know that there is one in the deck there. Well, thinning is winning, and we know the hand is starting to see a little bit of a reduction now. Always feels nice when you have that Beaveril in play. Those industrious incisors could potentially start to assist here, and really would love to see that pow pad. If you can start to bring back some of these supporter cards, maybe find boss's orders, right. you can take big knockouts here on Pokemon V. This would be a crucial turn right now with four prizes uh, available for Zul. He does have the Flying Pikachu VMAX in hand. I don't know that he has access to it. I, I don't think he can quite pull off the Pal Pad for the boss this turn. His hand just quite isn't quite big enough. He will get to utilize Isaiah's training court, though. I always love whenever you get to use your opponent's own stadium against them. Yeah, I've, uh, I've definitely helped, used uh, Regigigas to help <laughs> me look through my deck, even when I don't have any lightning Pokemon or dragon. Yeah, the stormy mountains yeah. there. <laughs> I love using my opponent's tropical beach in Expanded because, you know, I don't have any of them. <laughs> and uh, whenever my <laughs> opponent puts it into play, I just get to fill my hand up, and it's like, this is my only opportunity. Well, we are going to see that Marnie as the supporter for the turn, but definitely could still find some relevant cards off of this draw. If we were to see a card like Palpat, then you'd see the bosses start to come back into the deck. And but the energy is a really nice find too, potentially. And this was a super smart decision from Azul. Before the Marnie, he used Training Court, put a Lightning Energy back into the hand, but put it on the bottom of the deck because he knows he's using Trinity Nova this turn. And now he can search the deck for one of those Lightning Energy, accelerate it to the Pikachu. He can actually even get two out of the deck now and set up the Crobat as something that can potentially pivot out. Yes, so smart there by Azul. Takes a little bit of a risk with the Beebrill drawing too. If I saw two lightnings, I'd probably scream, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's pretty fine there. Even if you did find it in the hand, you'd have it for next turn. So Azul will go to three prizes remaining. This is a little awkward for his prize trade. He really would have liked to have just KO'd two Palkia V-Star. It didn't quite work out this way though, and now Isaiah's gonna force him to get through two Palkias. The problem, though, two fully set up Pikachu VMAXs with just three prizes remaining, it, I mean, it is starting to get tougher and tougher and tougher for Isaiah to find a path. Yeah, there's no Starmy V. Uh, if there was, we'd see a record number of damage in the finals. 
Uh, there is uh, also no Galarian Zigzagoon available, I believe. Right. That fell earlier in the game, and that is one way that damage starts to add up on this side of the board. That's right, and Isaiah does not have the Ordinary Rod in this list, so once those Pokemon hit the discard pile, like the Radiant Greninja and the Galarian Zigzagoon, they cannot come back. I think Azul understands this. The four Pokemon in play is a really nice uh, spot to be in. Of course, with nine Pokemon, 240 is available. The choice belt is something that could reach 270, and that would mean Echoing Horn would have to come down in order to take a knockout here on the active Pokemon. So no way for this active Arceus to be KO'd here. Isaiah is also not playing that quick shooting Intellion, something that has been a popular inclusion, and Isaiah sees the writing on the wall. Can't get through two flying Pikachus. Let's go to game three here at the North America International Championships. <laughs> this is exactly what we wanted to see. Two players playing at the top of their game, going to bring it to a game three here. And uh, even though that didn't go Isaiah's way, started a little slow, and Azul found everything he wanted, you have to think that he's excited about the opportunity to go first in a game three. I just have to wonder if that was a huge opening for Isaiah that he could not capitalize on. Azul had to put the Crobat down, had to evolve into the VMAX to protect it. If Isaiah pulls off that Radiant Greninja turn, the prizes are lined up for him to just win the game in two turns. He was just one energy, one movement card away from pulling that combo off. And Azul finds himself going to a game three where he might not have to put Crobat in play. He's put it in play in both of these other two games. Maybe it's something he can avoid in game three. Yeah, there's been debate about the capacious bucket count. Do you play three, four, two? Two, absolutely not. Don't do that. <laughs> not but anymore, Three no. has certainly been the number that a lot of players have fallen on. We've seen the inclusion of four definitely be impactful and just didn't have access to that card in game two in the early stages of the game. Didn't get to continue to recycle those energy cards. And eventually, when the star portal turn had to happen because of the stadium, we only saw two energies. So now in game three, Isaiah will have the opportunity to choose to go first, which is a great advantage. He'll have a little bit less access to his battle VIP pass since he cannot play Irida on turn one. But he is playing the full four copies for this exact reason. He wants to be as consistent as possible. And opening with that card is a great way to just get an excellent setup. Whew. Well... The anticipation builds as Azul finds a mulligan. And uh, that is going to be exactly what Isaiah wants to see. We do know he's starting that Radiant Greninja in the active spot. And a the little prize awkward, yeah, here in the prizes. That one copy of Boss's Orders could definitely be relevant. We saw Rune prize one boss in the Seniors Finals. Ended up not mattering too much since he was able to still come out victorious. Also, that third copy of Sobble, since he only plays three, is also uh, could be relevant. But, you know, we know he's got a card to fetch it out if he ever wants it. Yeah, expect that Isuian Heavy Ball potentially. And that could, of course, move where the boss is orders is placed Very right true. now. We saw it in the middle. Maybe if that works its way down to the lower portion of the prize cards, Isaiah could make a lot of use of that, especially in combination with Palpad. Let's see if Azul can find a basic Pokemon path, here. Path. You oh, really, golly. yeah. Okay, no basic. That hand was going to be pretty awkward if he uh, did find one though on the last cards. You really don't want to be giving Isaiah extra cards to work with. He's already going first, which is an advantage in and of itself. But now you're giving him more cards to work with, which gives him higher odds to find Battle VIP Pass, to find basic Pokemon, to get energy cards into play, use Radiant Greninja, discard them. You're just giving ac access to the deck a little too much if you give up too many mulligans. That is a great point. And Isaiah, you know he has to be thinking, go ahead, give me another. Another and there's mulligan. there's another three that, quick balls. <laughs> that is not going to be enough for Azul to get this game going. I think we had a full house there in that hand. Three quick balls, <laughs> a couple of path to the peak I'm as all well. In. So Isaiah will just continue to increase this advantage. Going first already so good. And now having three additional cards to work with. I got to say as well, Kyle, I got a little bit of a peek at that hand from Isaiah. It was not super strong, 
couple of awkward cards in there, the Roxanne and a couple of cross switchers, I think, just off the bat. So yeah, it, getting it more mulligans and help. a fourth mulligan. Azul plays a ton of basic Pokemon here. Well, I didn't think time was an issue, <laughs> uh, but, but maybe we have to start considering that. I think we're down to about under 25 minutes here in our championship match. And uh, we, we've been using the clock here and there. Maybe we start to see the, the plus three turns start to come into play if Azul just doesn't start playing Pokemon in the next few minutes. Yeah, hopefully we can find a basic Pokemon soon off of one of these shuffles. We're probably getting there for a record as far as our streamed matches go of how many mulligans we've seen. Well, this is not Stone Jorner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this, is a, uh, this is a deck with plenty of basic Pokemon. Yeah, he's got 11 in here. Gotta think he'll find one pretty soon and we can get game three underway and i yes. do see an arceus v in this hand so we can finally get this match number three underway azul garcia griego with the flying pikachu up against isaiah's origin form palkia taking a quick peek at the prizes here for azul and that Rion maybe could be a little bit of an issue the boss's orders at the tippy top also a little unfortunate but all in all, I think we are set up for a perfect game here. And Isaiah now just having so many cards to work with and is going to increase the hand size even more with a capacious bucket, getting two water energies out of the deck, placing them into the hand. And since he started that Radiant Greninja, we can start to see concealed cards getting so many extra pieces as early as this turn. Well, Isaiah got to draw two hands to start this final <laughs> game, and I don't think any of them had battle VIP pass, so the Capacious Bucket is going to be a great way to thin the deck out, grab some water energies, and maybe the top cards of your deck are live with that Concealed Cards ability. We've seen it in every game so far. Isaiah loves to take time, check the prizes. He makes plays based on what he has available and what he knows is not around. I don't know if I see any basic Pokemon search. In that opening hand, really. How is that possible? There, I mean, he started with six cards, plus four from the Mulligans, 10, plus draw for turn, 11 cards in that opening hand, and there's no basic Pokemon search? Well, it is, unless my eyes are, are mistaking me, let's see what the Conceal cards has for us. Yeah, plenty of opportunity here to hit a battle VIP pass, maybe a level ball to get a Sobble into play, maybe even just finding a Pokemon itself, the Sobble or the Origin Form Palkia. Of course, oh. this was the one big piece that Isaiah didn't have last game, now has the energies, but does he have the Pokemon? And no, no. those are not good pickups. Whoa. That is a huge hand, no and he just attaches way. to Greninja and passes. Azul breathes a sigh of relief here, and starting that Arceus V is really strong because if he finds double turbo energy, we could see a Pikachu V get loaded up as early as turn one. We see Azul has that. Look at how many cards hand. Isaiah has in hand 12 cards, and he has no other outs to Pokemon. Azul does play four Marnie. I don't think he wants to play any of them this turn. <laughs> Pretty wild that Isaiah just off of that massive hand did not get set up. Azul is sitting on a research in hand. Also has that Crobat as well as a Pikachu VMAX. So that would have to hit the discard pile off of the research if he wanted to go that route. Maybe he's okay just attaching a basic energy for turn. I did see a basic lightning in the hand. Knowing that Isaiah had a little bit slower of a start, he can just sit on this hand and guarantee the Pikachu VMAX next turn. I think maybe going for an, an aggressive strategy could be beneficial in this spot. Sure. Finding a path to the peak could certainly be great because if you start to push the aggression here and close out any of the additional draws from this Radiant Greninja, you already know they don't find basic Pokemon. And if you don't have basic Pokemon, it's going to be very hard to keep playing this game. I mean, you have to assume Isaiah at least has like a supporter card or something. Irida Marnie something. or Irida, exactly. So 
I think Azul recognizing this, actually holding on to the V-Star and the V-Max, will just attach for turn and pass to Isaiah, <laughs> who scoops up this massive hand. And now see what he has to work with. I think his top deck was a, a Palkia V-Star. That's not helpful either. Yeah, that's the uh, that's a great card when you use double battle VIP pass on turn one. Wow, look at this hand. So many energies, so many evolutions. No basic Pokemon. There is at least a Marnie there. Irida will help uh, him, and that battle VIP pass just one turn too late. Irida, of course, can go and find some water Pokemon and maybe a quick ball or level ball to assist here. Sobble certainly has to be a card on your mind, but we do know that one of those Sobbles is in the prize cards, so maybe keep calling isn't going to be the greatest strategy here. This slower setup is really advantageous for Azul. He's already threatening an Arceus V-Star attacking next turn. If Isaiah doesn't retreat, Azul will be knocking out this Radiant Greninja, which is the one Radiant Pokemon Isaiah is able to play in his deck. And we already talked about in game two how he does not play Ordinary Rod. There's no way to recover it. Yeah, so big for Azul. Having the Evolution Pokemon in hand deciding to go with the conservative strategy and going to have just about every answer possible for uh, whatever Isaiah can find and has to love seeing that it's just an Irida, nothing too wild happening here on, the, on this second turn. And this is a turn after Isaiah is done that I think Azul would be much more comfortable going with Marnie because if your opponent didn't play a basic search card on turn one, if they had to draw cards before they could use their supporter for turn, you know they're probably just sitting on a hand full of evolution Pokemon. Yeah, Path Marnie in a spot like this. No Palkia V-Star available this turn. No Star Portal going to be available. And that means that Isaiah's really going to have to be using all of his resources as best as possible. Training Court would have to be a, a big draw here. And we know that there's just that one Sobble. That's so right. This is super unfortunate. A little bit of a weak keep calling, only getting one Sobble. Isaiah does only play the three, one in the prizes, and Azul has two evolutions immediately. That last card, last couple cards in hand does contain a research, but if Azul's flipping this V-Star marker, I think we may see the Marnie to get rid of Isaiah's massive hand. Yeah, we could see the double turbo and the Marnie, and then you just hope that the top decks get you to a path to the peak. That would be a great way to close out on this position. Remove Asable from play, leave Isaiah with that one live draw in the, the Drizzile to start and uh, get some abilities back into play. There goes the double turbo now. Marnie being played as well. Azul would also love to get a Bidoof down very soon so that he can start to establish Bibro. Industrious Incisors is only as good as as long as you get to use it. And there, speaking of which, is a Bidoof in this hand. Yeah, give him two, why not, Joe? <laughs> and Trinity Nova takes the KO. Azul taking the first prize in game three, fully loading up a Pikachu VMAX, not even benching Bidoof. This is what he wants to do. He wants to get as set up with as few Pokemon in play as possible. Isaiah's just finding all the wrong cards. Thankfully, at least, he finds the Drizzile, but we saw VIP pass Pow Pad and another blank just not going to be too helpful here. He is very reliant on this shady dealings, having to get any trainer card out of the deck, it's the one thing that can help him. Melanie, Melanie could be nice. There are a few water energies in the discard pile already. The path to the peak did not find its way down. It was not in the hand from after the Marnie. Right. Isaiah looks like we'll just start the turn with a Marnie. Or sorry, with a Melanie. Deciding to do that before using Shady Dealings, he has knowledge of the cards that are on the bottom of his deck. With Marnie, the cards don't get shuffled in. They just go straight to the bottom. So he has a couple shuffle cards in his hand that he could play, the Pal Pad, maybe the Drizzile. But if he knows that there's not pieces on the bottom that he wants, he's giving himself higher odds to draw into other things by playing the Melanie first. Yeah, maybe doesn't need all those cross switchers from right. the first hand. So nice sequencing here. But oh. double scoop. Scoop up net and a tool scrapper. The scoop up net can let him reuse the Greninja potentially and also get it out of the active spot so he can pull off an attack this turn. But man, I mean, attacking with Palkia V-Star here feels like you're just walking into Azul's trap. 
Yeah, that does not feel good. You'd, you'd think that the Radiant Greninja would be a, a, a solid attacker in this spot. Maybe you can get that chip damage onto the Flying Pikachu VMAX, but Azul also imploring this strategy of a limited bench space. We saw the B-Dupes in the hand, but didn't want to play those down, and that could certainly be a nod to that strategy. Isaiah trying to identify what the grab is. You can see by his body language, he knows this is a tough spot to be in. But Isaiah is a very smart, very intelligent player. He is going to try to identify all of the lines. This is game three. Everything is on the line. If he does not win here, he's going home as a runner-up. And, and the champion title would mean the world to him, I know. And we do see that capacious bucket, and that is going to lead to some cards. Off the top, concealed cards going to go ahead. Draw two. Drizzile. Irida. Irida. Can't play it this turn, though. Did use the Melanie. That is decent setup for following turns. Scoop up net the Radiant Greninja. Send up the Manaphy and hope Azul doesn't have boss. Radiant Greninja drawing two more now. Incense and training courts. No more outs to Pokemon. Asking Azul how many cards he has in his hand. Yeah, the Evolution Incense going to be able to find the, or, the Origin Form Palkia V Star. So e it, but there's a flying Pikachu V Max in play. <laughs> Even if it seems bleak for Isaiah, he is going to stick it out to the end. Like I said, game three here. The last game of the entire tournament, even if there is a 0.001% chance that Isaiah can find a way back in, he is going to play to it. He's going to try to make it happen. And does he have enough energy in the discard pile now to attack with the Radiant Greninja this turn? He could spread a couple of damage counters with that Moonlight Shuriken, placing 90 damage on each of the Pokemon in play for Azul. Yeah, we do see just one energy off of the training court. It's going to be the attachment for the turn potentially, but just want to make sure that you've got those waters. I think we did see three very yep. quickly. Did look like there was still three in there. Moonlight Shuriken can come down. By setting up the Pikachu, you know that you'll be able to deal with it pretty quickly if Azul does start to attack with it. Isaiah's definitely not out of this. Still very much in it because now that this Pikachu will be damaged, he'll be able to deal with it once it does come up and start attacking. And then as long as he can do that and Azul can't establish a second Pikachu VMAX, Azul, uh, Isaiah, excuse me, would actually not even be in that bad of a spot. Yeah, there is the Star Portal going to accelerate those energies from the discard pile up to the Radiant Greninja. Moonlight Shuriken surely going to be the play here. What targets do you think he's going for, Chip? <laughs> I wonder. I think an Arceus and a Pikachu seem like decent choices. Palpad being played first. There are quite a few supporters in the discard pile now. I think actually just the Melanie and the Irida to put back. Yeah, honestly, anything at this point would be nice to find off the top. He will put both back into the deck, now being options to draw off of a later Shady Dealings, maybe pieces he can get into off of a potential Marnie. And Moonlight Shuriken comes out. 90 damage to both of these Pokemon. If Azul can use Boss's orders this turn and take out the Origin Form Palkia V-Star, there is not going to be any response from Isaiah. I don't think I see a Boss there in the hand, though. It doesn't want to play the additional Pokemon down in that, those B-Doof, and instead just going to go with this Marnie strategy. Try to get yourself access to some of those beneficial cards later on. Maybe you do find a card like Boss's Orders if Isaiah tries to stall for an additional turn here. But at least you've kept your bench space down to just one. That certainly that makes Isaiah have to find a lot off the top, and it likely starts with an Inteleon with Shady Dealings. Azul does have a Quick Ball in hand. He could establish another Flying Pikachu here. But with only one benched Pokemon in play, if Isaiah just knocks out this active Arceus V-Star, that means Azul would only have the lone Pikachu in play, meaning the max damage Isaiah could do would be 160 with a Choice Belt 190, and that is short of KOing the Pikachu v, uh, the Flying Pikachu V-Max. Yeah, and we've already seen plenty of scoop-up nets trying to uh, salvage this position, so you aren't going to see multiple hits from that Galarian Zigzagoon ability. 
Azul now having taken two prizes is ahead. Isaiah having to send up this Drizzile. If he wants to hit the Pikachu this turn, it's going to have to be through cross switchers. He does have that boss's orders, of course, in the prizes. And he does have Irida. This can grab that Shady Dealings Intellion. That'll unlock a few different plays. Echoing Horn, also a way to increase your damage output. Yeah, but at this point in the game, I don't think Azul has put anything in the discard pile. And if that one Arceus is down, I guess that would be the one way Isaiah could boost the damage a little bit more. Yeah, Azul has certainly been very careful with his resources, playing the bare minimum here in this final game three. Plenty of Marnies going down, but yeah, I don't think we ever really saw that Professor's research happen and a lot of uh, cards hitting the discard pile. Isaiah's Irida does eye up. That Intellion seems like a pretty easy choice of what to get. I do think he has a Quick Ball in hand, which can get the second Palkia V that he likely wants to establish this turn. And Hisuian Heavy Ball is another card he's eyeing up. We know there's a Sobble in the prizes. Yep, Sobble is available. Zigzagoon could potentially also hit the board. So you can start to see how the bench fills, but these are some unlikely MVP candidates that are going to be hitting the, 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 the table here. Looking at grabbing the cross switcher, Isaiah cannot... Can he KO this Pikachu this turn? With six Pokemon, he can deal 180 damage. With the Choice Belt, that's 210. And then with a Zigzagoon, that actually would be 220, which is how much HP this Pikachu has left. You can see the cards starting to come into play now. Can he fill the bench? I think that Zigzagoon is in the hand. Shady Dealings can get the other Cross Switcher if he needs it, and then a way to get another Pokemon out. There's Zigzagoon and Quick Ball. I actually think Isaiah is going to have the pieces to knock out Flying Pikachu VMAX this turn. That would be absolutely huge here. It seemed like he was so far down. He was so far behind. A, such a slow start even after all of those mulligans but he has found the path back into this using that Radiant Greninja, setting up both of these Pokemon, and then Azul's decision last turn to not establish another flying Pikachu V. Scoop up net is going to be the choice along with that cross switcher, that combination. It's going to be a way to bring that flying Pikachu V Max into the active spot. And if he's doing this, I think he's going for the KO. Does he have that choice belt in hand? We don't he doesn't it. have it, so maybe he can't pull it off, and he's just wanting to do as much damage as possible to this Pikachu so it's easy enough to KO in future turns. Yeah, I think that the problem was that there are only four Pokemon that were going to be available, and then the Echoing Horn just doesn't provide that additional mm -hmm. slot, and then uh, had to use <sighs> the last item card on that scoop up net instead of the choice belt. He when was just like those one cards piece there. away, it seems like, from pulling off that combo. Yeah, that's, uh, and then that's on Azul, because Azul was able to avoid playing down those Pokemon yep. into, the, into the discard pile. Very true. So it works out greatly for Azul here to not put that other Pikachu down. And it will just be the subspace swell hitting for just 140 damage. That might be the weakest Palkia attack we've seen all weekend. Well, uh, maybe that's the weakest one, but hopefully it's not the final one. Right. Is Isaiah really trying to stay in this match now. We did see that energy come down on the Palkia V, and that was the bare minimum that had to happen to stay in the game here. If Azul can start to establish another Pikachu this turn, if he can get down the basic, attach a lightning energy to it, and then on his next turn, find the double turbo energy, he would be able to deal with Isaiah's next attacker, which looks like it's lining up to be the Palkia V-Star, which the Palkia V has gotten the energy there on the bench. Yep. With the strategy that Azul has gone for, this does not include Bidoof or Bibarol coming down. So that means that we are starting to get into a dangerous range with that Roxanne. 
uh, there is certainly going to be a knockout here, and that will bring Azul down to just two prize cards. So you can see where Isaiah would certainly love to stick that to Azul and just leave him with potentially two or three cards uh, and no Flying Pikachu VMAX. And this is, I think, where we're going to see Azul start benching more Pokemon now. He knows that he's bought enough time, he's limited Isaiah's options to get big one-hit knockouts, and now he will feel so much safer putting these Pokemon in play. Yeah, every Ultra Ball is live. Every Evolution instance could potentially find a Beaveril and salvage the hand that Azul will eventually grab off of a potential Roxanne. So after the deck is cut, here comes Badoof. There's the Pikachu. Azul does have the Ooh, energy in double hand. Double Turbo. And this is really smart because he's leaving the training court in play. An easy way to get the lightning energy back would be to just retreat it off the Arceus next turn. Azul going down to just two prizes. Isaiah needs to find a way to come back, and the way to do it is definitely going to be through Roxanne. Yes, yeah, so and you did mention that training court is available. That also means an energy for Isaiah is going to be there too. So we are going to see that uh, used now and then replace the stadium oh, with Path to the Peak. Does have the one path in this list, the other stadium, to uh, the training court being the only way for Isaiah to bump a path. We also see the Arceus V come down, so With the going Echoing to Horn. increase the bench spaces of Azul. Get those four Pokemon down. The Palkia V star is going to potentially be doing some more damage in this spot. Going to need to find some help off the deck, though. And Roxanne mimicking the predecessor in, in this exact situation. Isaiah, six prizes remaining. Azul with two, and that's the number of cards each of these players will have access to. Azul can, of course, find Bibriel to fill the hand back up. Isaiah will be taking a three-prize knockout this turn. Yeah, I think we did see the Palkia in the hand. Needs was it just the basic? Oh, he, no. He didn't find the V-Star. He oh, has to just retreat no. to Manaphy and pass. Now Azul only needing a boss's orders to close the game out this turn. Draws for turn. Does he have it? It's the Pumpkaboo. Pumpkaboo energy. What is in the, what is that last card? It's a research, I think. Okay, so he doesn't need to fully get the win this turn. He can just set up for the next turn to close it out by KOing Manaphy here. Now he doesn't even have to get through a Palkia. He can use Arceus to KO Drizzile that's on Isaiah's bench. Oh, that research is huge. for seven, massive. Azul will now be one turn away after this. Finding Ultra Ball. This can grab Bibarel. Azul can see even more cards. And now even if Isaiah was to pull off a Pal, Pla Pal Pad plus Roxanne play, he's got Bibarel to withstand that. Yes, Azul is finding everything he needs in this situation. Going to be able to thin even further now with Quick Balls in the hand too, or could potentially just hold on to those. Really just considering the situation, and yes, is going to go a little bit further here. Just thinning out those paths. Of course, there is not a path in play any longer because of good old pumpkin pit on the pumpkaboo. Going to see the fail of the quick ball, but of course, Beaveril with those industrious incisors is going to be around, and maybe we could see a, that second flying Pikachu VMAX come off the top of the deck here. Three cards, four cards actually drawn for Azul. Does he find the Pikachu or an Ultra Ball? There is an Ultra Ball as the fifth card. The lightning energies are something to think about here in this situation. And we have gotten confirmation. Time has been called. Azul will be turn zero. It's coming down to the wire here. This is turn zero, meaning Azul will only have one additional turn before time ex before the Time rules will come into play. Ultra Ball does get the Pikachu, and Trinity Nova KOs Manaphy. Azul has two Pikachus set up on the bench, and I don't know that there's anything Isaiah That's can it. send up. He says he can't win. Azul Garcia Griego is the North American International Champion. What a way to close things out. Double flying Pikachu VMAX writing on the wall, and Azul is your 2020 North American International Champion. 
What an incredible match. Both of these players playing their hearts out. They wanted the win so badly. After losing game one, Azul's able to keep his composure, recognize that he was still not out of it. Two games left to play, and he was able to fight back, winning the game two and game number three. What a match. Congratulations to the champion, Azul. That was something to see. I don't think we've 